Hello, two P's. Our topic today is solving system of equations, and for our goal, I can solve a system of equations by the method of elimination. So we're going to take a look at a new method uh, of solving systems that's going to be similar to the substitution method in that we have to get rid of one of the variables that we're trying to uh, find before we can do anything. Um, but it's a, maybe a little bit slicker than even what we do with substitution. Uh, so before we do that, we're going to take a look at another property of equations. We all know that you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide anything on both sides of the equation, and we still get an equal expression. Now that we have systems of equations, there are two more properties we're going to make use of, and that's the additive property and the subtractive property. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate this property with two very trivial equations. 2 plus 1 equals 3. It's very, very trivial, but hopefully none of you can uh, argue with the fact that it's true. Um, that's my equation one. I'm going to give you another trivial expression. This one maybe not quite as trivial. Negative 7 plus 3 equals negative 4. Still trivial in the fact that it's numeric, um, but I've thrown in a negative in there to just try and um, make it a, a little bit more difficult. Um, so the additive property is that I'm just going to add these two equations together. Just everything I'm going to add together straight down. And so over here I'm going to tell you I'm doing that by saying equation 1 plus equation 2. So if I take a look number by number, I'm going to add these two equations together. 2 plus negative 7 is negative 5. 1 plus 3 is 4, positive 4. And on the other side of the equation, 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1. And have a look at this expression. If I have negative 5 and I go up 4 spaces, that takes me to negative 1. So I get a third equation here. After I added them together, I get a third equation that is still, in fact, true. And the subtractive property is very similar in that. Uh, I'm going to use the same two expressions. 2 plus 1 equals 3, and negative 7 plus 3 equals negative 4. And this time I'm going to subtract the two equa equations. I'm going to take equation 1 and subtract equation 2. You've got to be careful because we've got some negatives in here. 2 subtract negative 7 is like 2 plus 7 when we get rid of the double negatives, which is 9. 1 subtract 3. 1 subtract 3 is negative 2. And again, you got to be careful of the double negatives on the other side. 3 subtract negative 4 is like 3 plus 4, so that's 7. And take a look, 9 subtract 2 is in fact 7. So I've gotten an equation 3 that while it's different than the other 2, it is also correct. So we're going to use this in order to eliminate a variable. Take a look at this expression. a plus 2b equals negative 5, and 3a minus 2b equals 17. Now, the thing here, we've got these two, that variable b has the same number in front of it. And since it has the same number in front of it, it's a prime candidate of getting rid of if I either add or subtract the two equations. Now, since the signs in front of them are different, we know that when I combine things that have different signs, there's cancellation that goes on. So if I add these two equations, if I take equation 1 and I add it to equation 2, these things are just going to disappear. They're going to go away because two positives and two negatives together make 0. So all I'm going to be left with when I take equation 1 and add equation 2 are a's. My b's will be gone. And if I add those together, 1a and then 3a's gives me 4a. And on the other side, I need to be careful of my negatives. Negative 5 plus 17 is actually positive 12 because those five negatives cancel five of those positives. Now, this equation is true. It also only has an a in it, and I know how to solve this. I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And once I divide both sides by 4, my answer is a equals 3. So now I know what a is. I just need to sub back into 1 or 2, whichever one you like best. And I kind of like 1 best because it has this a out front that already doesn't have a coefficient. So it's very close to being by itself in the first place. So I'm going to sub 
a that I found into equation 1. And equation 1 is a plus 2b equals negative 5. But instead of a, I'm going to write 3. And 3 plus 2b equals negative 5. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, so that's going to give me 2b equals negative 8. And for those of you that maybe still need to do this, you can subtract 3 and subtract 3 and know that negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. And then I need to divide both sides by 2. And when I divide both sides by 2, I get b equals negative 4. So there's my answer. The A and the B that make both of those things true is 3 and negative 4. And I'm just going to do a quick little check here. Uh, if I check equation 1, that tells me that if I take 1A, which is 3, and add in 2Bs, which is negative 4, I should end up with negative 5. So let's see if I do. Uh, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And so 3 minus 8 is negative 5. So I do, in fact, end up with negative 5, so I like that. Now I'm going to do a quick check in equation number 2. Equation 2 tells me that if I take 3 A's, and A is 3, so I'm going to take 3 3's, and if I subtract 2 B's, and my B was negative 4, what I should end up with is 17. That's what equation 2 tells me, so I'm going to look at it and say, okay, 9 negative 2 minus, times negative 4 is plus 8, and so I have 17, which is what I was supposed to get. So that checks in those two equations. So I know I found the right A and the right B. I'm going to do this a couple more times, and I want you to notice uh, up there, I've put it in a box because it's important. You need one of the variables to have the same coefficient in each equation. That's the key to solving by elimination. So in example one, it says solve by adding or subtracting the equations. So you have to decide whether you're going to add or subtract. Well, the variable that has the same number is this y. And that number, of course, is 1, even though it's not written there. That number is 1. Uh, and they have opposite signs. When they have opposite signs, I have to add them together to make them go away. So I'm going to take equation 1 and add equation 2. And if I take equation 1 and add equation 2, I now have 7x's. The y's disappear, and on the other side, 9 plus 2 is 21. Divide both sides by 7, and x equals 3 is the answer um, for the x. Now, of course, I need to know what y is, so I'm going to sub x in, and it doesn't matter where. Um, either one of the equations look good. Uh, quest, uh, it, Number 2 has smaller numbers, um, so I'm going to use number 2. Number 2 is 4x minus y equals 2. And, of course, we found x to be 3, so that's actually 4 times 3 minus y equals 2. 12 minus y equals 2, because 4 times 3 is 12. Now I need to subtract 12 on both sides to make it go away, because I'm trying to get that y by itself. And I get negative y equals negative 10. And, of course, um, we divide both sides or multiply both sides by negative 1 to find out that y equals positive 10. So there I have my two answers. And it was actually harder to find the second one here than it was the first one. Um, that won't always be the case. Now we're going to take a look at one where we have to first multiply uh, one or both of the equations to make the coefficients be the same. So looking at this one, equation 1 and equation 2. Um, these coefficients have to be the same if I want to get rid of the x's. They're not, so that's a problem. These coefficients have to be the same if I want to get rid of the y's. They're not, so that's a problem. So what I have to do is figure out what can I multiply to, to in order to make those things the same. Because as long as I multiply both sides of the equation by some number, um, by the same number, um, I'm fine. I get a new equation, but it's basically the same as the other one, just slightly, it's still equal. 
So I take a look at these two numbers and I say, what do both 6 and 2 go into? What's the smallest number that both 6 and 2 go into? Some people would say, oh, it's 12. But no, actually, 2 goes into 6 itself, and every number goes into itself. So the smallest number both 6 and, go in, and 2 go into is, in fact, 6. And 5 and 2, the smallest number that both 5 and 2 go into is 10. So I can either make the number in front of the x's say 6, or I can make the number in front of the y's say 10. And since one of these x's is already 6, that's the easiest thing to do. So now I have to ask myself, what can I do to equation 1 to get a 6 in front of that x? And the answer is, well, if I multiply by 3, that 2 is going to turn into a 6. So I get a 6x, and that's what this means. It means 3 times equation 1. So I get 6x plus, and I have to multiply this 5 by 3 as well. I have to multiply everything by 3. So I get 6x plus 15y equals, and 3 times negative 14 is negative 42. And that is my equation 3. Now, my equation 2, I'm just going to write it right underneath it, 6x plus 2y equals 6. Uh, that's my equation 2. I haven't changed it, so I'm still going to call it equation 2 with my little numbers out here. And these numbers are important. Those numbers are the way I can, I can see your thinking, so if you make a mistake, I know what to do. Now, these 6s have the same number in front of them. And that number has the same sign. So to make them go away this time, since they have the same sign, they're both positive, there's an understood plus in here. Since those numbers both have the same sign, I have to subtract to get rid of them. So I take equation 3 and I subtract equation 2. Now when I do that, my x's are going to go away. And I'm going to have 13 y's. When I do 15 y, take away 2 y. I get 13y. And negative 42 subtract 6 is negative 49. And be careful with your integers there. Use a calculator if you have to. And now I divide both sides by 13 in order to get y completely by itself. And y is going to equal um, negative uh, 49 over 13. It's a decimal, that shouldn't be a problem. Decimals just give us an approximate answer. So this is approximately negative 3.8. And now to get the other value of y, I have to sub this negative, or the other value, the x value, I have to sub this negative 3.8 back into one of the equations. And I'm going to pick either from 1 or 2 because I haven't made any numbers bigger. And I think I want to pick from equation 2 because the numbers are smaller and they're all positive. So I'm going to say sub y into equation 2. And so I have 6x plus 2 times negative 3.8 equals 6. And I just noticed that I have a very tiny mistake here. This should have been 48, not 49. So we're going to go back and correct that. And 48 divided by 13 gives me a decimal of still negative 3.8. So it wouldn't have changed it that much. Um, and so I have 6x minus 7.6 equals 6. Now I have to add 7.6 on both sides. And I get 6x equals 13.6. And now I need to divide both sides by 6 in order to get what my x is. And that x is going to be 2.3, approximately. And so there, I've solved my for my variables. And that brings us to the end of this lesson on solving by elimination.